Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Gather round the sacred circle. It's time to power up healing, commitment, self-esteem. Open and receive the wisdom, guidance, and acceleration given from the power up plants of hawthorn, dianthus, cedar, cyclamen, cannabis, echinacea, lemon balm, eucalyptus, St. John's wort, rose, daffodil, echinacea, and the energy of cougar and shaman. We're having a party today and we command with love, may we feel this power within us. See yourself surrounded by your herbal allies and they are great in number today as we power up healing as we power up commitment, as we power up self-esteem. We are surrounded by so many old friends and a new one, new one, definitely a new one. We are welcoming into the circle a cougar and the ancient healing wisdom of a shaman. The shaman and the priestess of healing stand next to each other, reminding us that all illnesses, whether they are physical, emotional, or psychological, stem from an illness of spirit. It's an energetic wound. It may be due to soul loss or psychic intrusions or ancestral karma or other spiritual causes that could be contributing to the manifest condition for which you seek help. If you are looking for healing, you are indicating that something is broken or wounded or not quite right or disconnected or diseased in your body. And regardless of the complaint, it all stems back to inner energy. Energy and energy. So the remedies from nature are abundant. Many natural remedies, many ways to energetically heal, many ways to let the healing of your spirit be your top priority. So the shaman reminds you that your deepest spiritual wound is the illusion of being separate from source, from God, from the great spirit, from mother nature. It is your egoic perception of separation and illusion that is wounding you. It is the trick of the mind that creates this sense of separation and it can be healed. So today we come together in the sacred circle. It is a time of deep healing. And we start with our relationship to spirit, with spirit, as spirit. So call upon your spirit guides and herbal allies and ancestors to help you with any emotional, mental, or physical healing that you need. Call upon the creator to assist you in mending any rift in your relationship with spirit. Choose thoughts that add to your well-being. 
choose thoughts that support wholeness. Allow any darker thoughts or shadows to appear as well, but simply observe them as they arise in consciousness, then dissolve. See yourself as healed, whole, and complete, and it shall be. Heal your heart, heal your mind, and heal your body. I am Cyclamen, and I am here to help you power up your self-esteem. You are worthy of well-being. Tis time to shine. Draw on your self-esteem. Polish up your confidence and make it gleam. Get a grip on life and take a firm hold. You're being called upon to step up, so be bold. You are so very fantastic. You are such a star. Please let your light shine, both near and far. Your mental healing is so very much about having confidence in your worth and abilities. It is time that you had total respect for you. So go easy on yourself. Don't judge yourself so harshly. Have the belief, have the faith, have the total and utmost confidence that you can do whatever you set your mind to. You can heal. You are healed. Remember, you are gorgeous and fabulous. Do not forget it. Listen to your heart. Ignore the little nagging voice and take heed of the words spoken by the real inner you, the one you keep hidden, the one you keep pushing down. That inner voice knows your true worth. It is very wise, so pay attention to it. Count all the good things about yourself. I bet once you sit down and really think about it, there are a lot. Don't do yourself an injustice. It's time to power up your self-esteem. The thing about self-esteem is it's easy to perceive others as being better than you. This is a trap of the ego. This is the voice you want to ignore and instead tell yourself that you possess gifts of the soul that benefit yourself and others. There is no one greater or lesser than you. So tap into that natural humility that sees an equal playing field for all. Everyone is born with unique abilities of the soul. Everyone has an opportunity to reveal their gifts to a greater or lesser degree. No two are ever alike. So that means you have a unique perspective to share with the world and have come back this time to put your stamp on it. So it's very much beneficial for you to identify and celebrate the wonderful things about yourself. Maybe you're not even aware or in tune with your incredible and gifted self. So make a list of 10 aspects of yourself or abilities you possess that you love and hold in high regard. It's not always easy to write about yourself, but sometimes you just need to be reminded how special you are. You are here on purpose. You did not come here upon accident. You have meaning and a reason for being. You are a treasure chest of incredible gifts and insights. Now is the time to celebrate you. I am Daffodil and I am here to remind you that you are already complete. Just in being, there is a joyous energy that you can tap into 
to nurture and nourish and fertilize your self-worth. You need to recognize, appreciate, and hone your own talents now. And realize that if you are struggling with envy or jealousy, it is time to focus on yourself. It is time to teach self-love to others by demonstrating it within. Just like me, you are incredibly strong. Your willpower is equally strong. And now it is time to assert your authority and take action in the direction of your dreams. You have the ability to stand within all elements. You have the ability to be patient. You have the ability to manifest and evolve into the most beautiful, authentic you. This Affirmation Minute is brought to you by our Herb of the Week, Self-Heal Prunella, and I share them all lovingly with you. I am responsible for my journey. I breathe in light and heal myself. I ripple out positive energy. I honor my body, my heart, and my mind. I spiral deeper to understand myself and evolve. My home is love and my heart is open to receive. I am responsible for my journey. I breathe in light and heal myself. I ripple out positive energy. I honor my body, my heart, and my mind. I spiral deeper to understand myself and evolve. My home is love and my heart is open to receive. And so it is. When you go to power up your self-esteem, there is something a little tricky about self-worth and Eleanor Roosevelt nailed it when she said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So it is absolutely your responsibility to feel good, to make sure that you feel good in this life and you're feeling less than good. You kind of just have to suck it up and realize that You consented to someone making you feel bad about you. To have self-worth is to have moved beyond the belief that valuing ourselves is egotistical. It is a recognition that we are unique and lovable just as we are. Only when we have come to this point can we really begin to manifest ourselves in the world and then take a full part in a relationship. So you are worth a great deal right now, but maybe you don't always see it. Maybe you're just having a moment with me to have a little pity party. I get it. I certainly know how to throw a party, but today we're having a little bit of a different party here surrounded by so many herbal botanical allies. So with our self-worth, sometimes if we don't see the worth in ourselves, we attract others who exploit our good nature. We may just say, oh, that's just me giving love. But there's something about a lack of self-worth that we overgive and we should maybe ask ourselves, Do we give and give and give so much because we need to feel needed? Or we just want to be worthy through someone else's eyes? A lack of self-worth tends to produce kindness or niceness to everybody except oneself. 
So sometimes your self-worth gets so low and your self-esteem gets so low that you rarely even put yourself in a position to have a relationship or meaningful friendships. And then if you do, you're just so grateful for someone choosing to be with you that your real self-expression goes out the window for fear of driving the other person away. It certainly is a mind trip. So consider this. If you cannot value yourself just as you are, you will continue to attract partners who mirror this self-rejection. For the value you put on yourself is the value you put they that put on you. So look back on your childhood. Daffodil encourages you along with cedar and echinacea and hawthorn and dianthus coming in ready to power up our healing. Look back at the wounded child within. Look back perhaps when you had a moment when you did not feel good enough, perhaps not lovable. Look back at the wounded child within who didn't receive the love that they needed and is still looking to be validated from the outside. You must find this wounded part within you and see what you can do to hold this child in love. Feel for yourself. Be kind to yourself. Parent yourself as you would have wanted to be parented then. If you keep manipulating others in your life today into giving you the assurance, the reassurance or security that you feel you lacked, you will ultimately always be disappointed. Your partner and your friends are not your parent. You need to parent you now. Begin to see how power and control are being played out in your life. By seeking to please and appease and maybe even manipulating others, you are giving permission to stay in this frequency of the lack of self-worth and the lack of self-esteem. So with so much love, it's time to hear that it really is time to stop trying to prove yourself and it really is time to stop imagining that others are better than you. You are infinitely precious. You are truly amazing in your uniqueness. And the moment you can, connect, you can connect with that, your life will begin to change. But as long as you continue to measure your self-worth through the externals of life, you'll continue to lack self-worth. So we make intentions today to power up our self-esteem, to increase our self-worth. We don't need to pretend that we are superior. We can just naturally value ourself. We don't need to measure ourselves comparing ourselves to other. Our real worth is in the essence of who we truly are. Just being. Take away all the superficiality. Take away all the egoic goals and pursuits. You just being you makes you worthy. You just being you is enough. So once you can acknowledge the true worth of your own simple humanity, you will recognize the worth of others too. So look beyond the superficialities of life Look within, deep inside, and go deeper inside that you may have ever gone before. It is time to genuinely love ourselves. It is time to power up our self-esteem.
I am Cougar, and I am here to power up your commitment. Take time to commit to yourself, and you will know when the time is right to take action. When you commit to something, you will intuitively know when to make a move. And the time is now to make a move in loving yourself, in fully committing to your healing journey. Feel that power within and move forward with strength and integrity. a lot of us desperately want to feel genuinely good about ourselves and bypass the egoic superficiality ruffling of feathers and inflating our egos and you know thinking however our minds think and just genuinely loving ourselves so it is to be acknowledged that the greatest obstacle all along to doing this is ourselves like so we just need to kind of sometimes move out of the way and allow ourselves to be and power up our commitment to seek and find and connect with spirit, right? That's what truly matters. So if you want to power up your healing and power up your self-esteem, you need to power up your commitment as well. You need commitment to focus on your target, to take aim. If you're shooting a bow and arrow, you've got to hone in before you pull back the bow. Then you shoot your arrow and know that you will hit the bullseye with every shot because you have committed to doing so. So this is the duality of enlightenment. To hit the bullseye requires total commitment of your spiritual and physical being, but it also requires total commitment to letting go, to simply walking down the path and through the gateway that leads to your true destiny. So as we go along our healing journeys, down our healing path, walking under another bridge, through another portal, over another mountain, whatever it takes for us to continue on. We are going through a process of gathering. You gather your emotions, your mental strength, and your abilities. You gather them all. It's a long process, but your commitment gives you endurance. You continue to show up. First, you define your act of power, and then you make the commitment. This is the way you will materialize your dreams and begin to live them. So plant your dream seeds and water them with your commitment. Build a magnificent space within you and do so with total commitment. Spirit and destiny will do the rest. Make a commitment to the earth. We are cedar and echinacea, and we are here with sacred healing. We are here with deep healing. Deep magic is still alive and deeply enmeshed within the heart of each human being. You are becoming a part of the history of the earth with each day of your life. What do you want to leave behind as your legacy? It is time to make a commitment to the healing of the collective and it starts with you. You carry healing energy within your heart just as the echinacea flower does. 
Where can you use your heart healing energy to create change in your life? To help create change in someone else's life? We are here to remind you to reconnect with your soul purpose and commit to being in alignment with that purpose for the highest good of the all. There are so many levels and avenues and directions and approaches to healing and different types of healing. We can heal ourselves, we can do family healing, ancestral healing, healing of the lineages, heart healing, physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing, energetic healing. So now coming forth from the circle of herbal allies is cannabis and Hawthorne. <laughs> an unlikely partnership coming in to say anything goes. There is no wrong way to heal or love or forgive or feel good or commit. Commit to whatever it is that you feel like it is time for you to do. So there is so much power in the message today from powering up our self-esteem, that we are just worthy as we are, just as being. Rumi said, your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Love is available to you. You are love, love just is. But if you have built up walls and barriers and blocks, it is time to deconstruct those and do the healing that you need. Hawthorne encourages us to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. Even in our healing, we can create a safe space for us, but be vulnerable and open and honest with yourself. You now have the opportunity to view your patterns and your belief systems and your blockages with great clarity so that you can break free from limiting beliefs and assumptions about love. So Grandmother Hawthorne is here and she is strong and gentle. She will never deliver more truth than you can handle, but if you open yourself up to her wisdom, you will receive the ultimate reward, a greater depth of feeling and a higher capacity to love. So when we heal our relationships with others, it's time to take a close look at how we've learned to give and receive love. We have learned behaviors. We have limiting beliefs. And we're not going to blame others. We're going to take responsibility like self-heal has encouraged us to do all week and take responsibilities for our feelings and take responsibility and commitment to moving forward. So Cannabis says, yo, this is a time of contentment and fulfillment and attainment of a healing outcome. So if you would like to heal your personal relationships, yes, your romantic relationships might need to enter a period of development, perhaps the beginning of something special as you open your heart, as you feel better about yourself, as you remember your self-worth, you become healed. And now you are at a perfect space to have togetherness and special occasions and to encourage relationships to be restored, to be healed. So remember, lead with your heart. 
When you make decisions and plans, you can't go wrong if you lead with your heart. So make a commitment to that. I am Dianthus, sending out much love and healing with positive energy to retain that feeling. Inspect your aura and look within. Check if the energy is clear or dim. Time to look out for number one. Tis important your self-healing is done. I am Dianthus and I am here with the message that healing is needed. Maybe not literally, maybe not broken bones, but I come with a message that you must care for yourself from the inside out. The body has to work in harmony with the mind and the soul to create balance. So if you allow yourself to be neglected, you won't be able to connect with others and your whole well-being will suffer. It's incredibly easy to do because you're so busy. So don't feel guilty or shudder, shoulder all the blame. Just take the time you need. Gather your strength and then you will be ready to rock and roll. So it really is a party today as we gather around the sacred circle with so many herbal allies today. Thank you, Cyclamen. Thank you, Hawthorne, Diantha Cedar, Cannabis, Echinacea, Lemon Ball, Eucalyptus, St. John's Wort, Rose, Daffodil. Oh, I hope everyone had something that they wanted to say and they got it out. Thank you again, Priestess of Healing and Cougar and Shaman. We open and receive the wisdom and guidance and acceleration given from these power of plants. Healing, commitment, and self-esteem. We command with love. May we feel this power within us. So be it.